Right, so we've left, left the yards and, and left uh, obviously the ewes behind and come out to the hills now. And just, I guess, following on from what we've heard already around restricting intake and what ewes can handle and what they can't handle, we've come out to a paddock here uh, in terms of post-grazing residual, and obviously this is what's being left behind now. So I probably just want to hand over to Sully now and just talk through when the stock left here uh, and obviously the paddock size and maybe more pellies, uh, more numbers, and how they've, they've, you've been managing that residual um, through the last sort of last three days and then into, um, into the next sort of rotation, really, the 60-day rotation you were talking about. Yeah, right. Okay, thanks, Ed. So, um, yeah, I've had all those ewes in one big mob um, going around here. Uh, they were in this paddock, oh, they came out of here about four and a half days ago. You can see it's um, it's already starting to green up a little bit after the rain we've had in the last couple of days. Um, but, so this is about, I don't know, I think it's about a shade under four hectares, three and a half, four hectare paddock. And they were in here for two days. So the residuals in here would be, it's, I'd, I'd probably call it 900. Um, I think a key point when you're talking about maintaining ewes or trying to build covers is if you're grazing down to that, that 900 covers or 800 covers or whatever it is, you can't be doing that for too long. Uh, I'd, so, so I'm quite happy these ewes would have been fed pretty well for a day, okay for half a day, and then they would have been hungry for half a day. That's okay. Um, having ewes being fed well for three days, okay for three days, and then hungry for three days, you're going to generate a bit more of a tail. Um, as I said, the idea would be to hopefully not get back into this paddock for another 60 days. So I'll have two months of growth in front of me. Yes, yeah, so I think um, up until now, like I said, I got 20 days into tupping and, and most of the ewes have been marked. So I put them in a big mob. Um, but up until now, I haven't known what condition, you know, exactly what condition they've been in. So I've probably been a little bit shy of really being hard on those ewes. And that's where that condition scoring that we've done today is so valuable. Um, I know I've got a, a mob of fat ewes now. I know, you know, I can be a lot more confident in just, you know, pushing them hard for that extra half a day here or there. I can be confident in that. Uh, and, and that's where you, you end up with those 10 extra days at the end of your rotation. That, that, that's gold coming into June, July. Right, I, I know it's quite ironic doing a, a drought seminar when, when it's raining, but um, right, I'm just going to go through measuring grass. Measuring grass at the moment is real important. Like I said, I've spoken so many times of trying to build covers, so even if you don't have a good history of pasture covers or anything like that, if you measure your grass at the end of each month for about three months now, you're going to know whether you're going that way or that way. So I've done my pasture walk and I know for the last month we've stood still, which isn't a good place to be at this time of the year. Um, a lot of people get a little bit frustrated with measuring grass at this time of the year. It's the hardest time of the year to measure grass. Um, I just use a sword stick. They're free and they're really simple um, where people get themselves in a bit of a tiz is around measuring rough grass there's not heaps of rough grass in this paddock but um, do I measure the green grass do I measure the rough grass what am I doing um, if you understand how these were calibrated uh, it makes it easier to know what you should be measuring right so a heap of years ago um, a heap of research trials were done hundreds of places all over the country and they actually cut and measured grass at different times of the year um, all over the country and so they knew if you had 10 centimetres of grass in the autumn it was roughly this much dry matter and that took into account the fact that in the autumn you're probably going to have um, a bit of rough stuff around so they were built for plate meters so if you've seen a plate meter it's basically just measuring the height of the pasture and these sword sticks are no different there's one two three four five centimeters up the side you're just measuring the height of the pasture and then the calculation in here whether you use autumn or winter that takes into account how much dry matter and how much dead grass is in the pasture so don't be scared of the dead grass you are measuring the dead grass as well so the way i usually do it is um I'll sort of look a couple of metres away from me and I'll say, right, that spot there, that's heaps of grass, that, that's more grass than's probably average in the paddock. That sort of bare spot there is less grass than what's average in the paddock. And then I just try and find myself a spot that looks about in the middle of those two. And I'll walk over there, keep my eye on it. I use one, so I use two sticks just like a plate metre. Um, I use one to measure it and the other one like my plate so I just push down until I'm feeling a fair bit of resistance there and that is somewhere between 1300 and 1500 so I'm going to call it um, 1400. 
The other good thing about using sword sticks rather than plate meters or all those electric probes is while I'm down here I'm noticing stuff like there's a heap of clover in here. Um, you might notice a bunch of little thistles coming up, you might notice flat weeds. It's just all little bits of information you can process while you're doing it. So um, the other tricky thing at this time of the year, and this paddock's a classic one, so we've got some hill faces here which I'd happily call 1400, and then we've got this is quite an easy paddock, so there's some easier parts which are probably more like, we'll go down and measure it, but it's probably more like 1700. So you just sort of need to, don't, it's sort of like condition scoring, don't overthink it, just think 1400, 1700, I'm going to call this paddock, it's probably more of the flat stuff than that, so I might call it 1600 or 1550 and move on to the next one. Um, the key thing is just get out and measure some grass. It is uh, it, like condition scoring, it's that you know, that really important piece of information that helps your decisions, um, it just reinforces your decisions and gives you more confidence with those decisions you'll make. Okay, so I've got those light years that I need to do something about. We talked up the hill about residuals of um, 800, 900 kgs of dry matter. That's okay for a fat you, but it ain't going to work for a light you. You're not going to pick her up at that, you're restricting intake at that. So what I personally am going to do with my light use is I'm going to take around 100, 150 of the light tutus and I'm just going to chuck them in with trade lambs um, and the other couple of hundred light ewes I'm going to put in front of my fat ewes so they're going to be coming into covers like this you can see there's good pick in there there's clover, high ME, you need high ME to put weight on things um, and that works quite well putting them in front of the light ewes uh, in front of the fat ewes as long as you don't have in my humble opinion and in my experience, if you've got no more than 15, 20% of your main mob out in front, well that will work okay. But you just need to make sure you're, you're doing that calculation, which we're gonna go through in a second, to make sure that your fat users are still getting fed well while their intake's being restricted.